You know him best as the voice of Larry the Cucumber. <laughs> Today, you'll hear from one of the creative masterminds behind the beloved children's series, Veggie Tales, next on Significant Insights. Welcome to the program. As usual, it's very good to have you with us. Yes, in fact, we do have vegetables in the house today. We uh, actually have a cucumber, a gourd, and a pea, but we'll explain all that in a minute. If you raise children any time in the past 20 years, you probably heard of Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber and have watched them and their vegetable friends bring Bible stories to life. And what became known to millions as Veggie Tales. Veggie Tales began in suburban Chicago with its creators Phil Vischer and his friend Mike Naraki. Phil was the voice of Bob the Tomato and Mike voiced Larry the Cucumber and their company was Big Idea Productions. Over the past 21 years, the group at Big Ideas experienced extreme highs as the adventures of Bob and Larry achieved success well beyond their wildest imaginations. Yet, with the highs came some deep valleys. A lot of factors, including growing too large too quickly, an expensive foray into movie making, and a costly lawsuit led them to bankruptcy. But now they've reemerged with a new original series on Netflix titled VeggieTales in the House. TLN's Greg Bogdan talked to Mike Naraki, the co-creator behind this much-loved series, about his life's journey from medicine to vegetables. Let me ask you a question. You do many of the voices in Veggie Tales. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give us a few examples of some of the voices? Well, sure. Well, there's Larry the Cucumber, first and foremost. That's my uh, marquee voice. There's my star hitter. <laughs> and then uh, I am Jean-Claude P, the little French P. Uh, one of the two. My real daddy's in France for a way. Adieu. So how great is my father for a day? And then uh, uh, Jerry, Jerry Gorn. He's one of the Gorn brothers. Laura, Laura Carrot, Carrot is, is up, up to bat. bat. For Larry's, Larry's team to, to pull, pull out, out a victory, victory it's, it's gonna, gonna take, take a miracle. A miracle. So, uh, yeah. and then, so and then uh, kind of, you know, probably three or four other voices that show up now and then, but those are the, my three main voices that I do. We took some uh, kids, we had them submit questions, so I'm gonna ask a few kid questions here. Okay, that's all very right. good. What encouraged you to do what you do? Uh, when I was in high school, um, I had so much fun, and even in middle school, I just loved drama, I loved singing, I loved writing songs. Um, but uh, in the church I was going to, I went forward at a youth convention and dedicated uh, my life to ministry. And I didn't know what that looked like. I had no model for that inside of the arts, which is what I really enjoyed doing. Um, my mom was a nurse, my brother was a, a chemistry major, and so I actually thought what that looked like for me was to be a medical missionary. And so that's what I went off to school to do. I went to a Bible college for a couple years. That's where Phil Vischer and I met. Um, and so every student there was required to do a student ministry. And so we met on the puppet team. We had both done puppeting. We were both huge Jim Henson fans. And, and so that's when we started uh, you know, writing and, and performing together. Uh, but at the heart of what, what I wanted in, 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 in missionally to serve was, was to help kids. You know, I was thinking of being a missionary pediatrician, mm -hmm. and God sort of revealed to me um, as we came up with a concept for VeggieTales that I could serve him in, in this way as well, and really with my, my gifts and my passion. And so, um, you know, that's, that's what led me into uh, becoming involved in, in animation and with VeggieTales in particular. Huh, very interesting. So another kid asked, what encouraged you to do teachings about the Bible through a vegetable show? Well, we really felt like we wanted to tell stories uh, with a biblical worldview, the, the, the belief that there's a God who made us, who loves us, and has a plan for our lives. And we felt like 
if we if we did that that would be a, a great thing for kids lives so much of what kids watched on TV uh, did not had no representation of, of God or the beliefs of the Bible in it and we just wanted to create a show where the characters assumed that you know as, as a ba basic assumption and so when they told a story about forgiveness or, or loving your neighbor or, or thankfulness that they could pull from uh, the authority of Scripture to say this is what God wants us to do with our lives and how, how he wants us to treat each other. Um, and, you know, we felt like that would be a, a great tool for kids and for parents. Yeah, very cool. Um, so we know kids love music, and you obviously, the theme song, um, you know, even my kids, they love singing along with it. How do you guys go about writing all the different songs? Oh, well, you know, um, uh, it, it, with music is a very important part of EduTales, always has been from the beginning within the context of the stories you know so whenever we write a song within the context of the story it's there to help prepare propel the story forward um, and be memorable within the context of the story and really you know you know kind of uh, we're hoping that that stays in the mind minds of kids to teach a lesson so if it is the thankfulness song you know just a little jingle that really is memorable that they can you know a thankful heart is a happy heart that you know they can remember that song and carry it with them um, so, so both from a from an educational and an entertainment standpoint, you know, we love to include music. Um, you know, silly songs have always been an important part of the show as well. Just you know, and, and really uh, from the beginning, the uh, sort of the I don't know the inspiration for that was Monty Python's, and now for something completely different. Right, <laughs> for that right. very first episode, we did you know the the um, the water buffalo song is sort of a break in between two little segments, and so it's like oh here's something different. You know, let's have Larry come out and sing something goofy. The Water Buffalo Song Everybody's got a water buffalo Yours is fast but mine is slow Oh, where'd we get them? I don't know But everybody's got a water buffalo Ooh. I took my buffalo to the store Got his head stuck in the door Spilled some lima beans on the floor Oh, everybody's stop got a... Stop, stop right this instant! What do you think you're doing? say everyone's got a water buffalo and everyone does not have a water buffalo. We're going to get nasty letters saying, where's my water buffalo? Why don't I have a water buffalo? And are you prepared to deal with that? I don't think so. Just stop being so silly. This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie sing. Everybody's got a baby kangaroo. Yours is pink but mine is blue. Um, and it was interesting because on our second episode, we didn't include a silly song. We kind of just did it for fun on that first one. And then we started to get letters, you know, hey, where's the silly song? What happened to the silly song? So then since then, we've done a silly song with it, with every episode. What's been the Christian response, both good and bad, to VeggieTales? Um, you know, I, I think we've gotten mostly good response over the years with VeggieTales. The the idea that yes, thank you, I can use this as a resource uh, for my kids for both passing on uh, values, biblical values to my child, but then also, you know, stories from the Bible. You know, that may be hard for kids to grasp. You know, the the main concept and the main meaning of. You know, we've tackled those with VeggieTales in a really fun and engaging way. Um, you know, as a way to say this is this is you know the the main plot of the story. This is really kind of the main theme of this story. And of course, we have we have fun, and we kind of you know kind of you know we we don't we never veer off the the main uh, topic and the and the main lesson of that. But we we can you know just have a lot of fun all the way right. along the way. Kind of in a way, the, the assumption with us was that okay, it's Bob and Larry putting on sort of a Sunday school version you know of of a Bible story. And that's sort of how we contextualize how we tell Bible stories, but then, um, you know, really the meat of the, the lesson in the story, uh, you know, comes through to kids and it makes those stories really memorable. Yeah. Uh, so then later when they read the, the actual story in the Bible, you know, those things can come to life and they can remember that better. Some of the negative feedback, my kids won't eat vegetables anymore. <laughs> <laughs> keep talking to them. <laughs> yeah, keep talking to them. Although we do hear both of the sides of that, that they're, you know, that thank you for VeggieTales because now my kids do eat vegetables. So right. some kids anthropomorphize and you know, don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat them and some do so you guys have had successes major successes you've had some failures you know how have you felt uh, God's presence with you through these past 20 25 years well you know I guess mostly it feels like what I've seen God do with the show and how you know just feedback of what it's done in, in people's lives I'm just really humbled by how how I don't know just how many mistakes we've made over the years but in spite of that God God has still seen um, 
I don't know, just just seen us through all of it. Um, you know, uh, you know, from the from the early years, just that 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 feeling of oh, we've got we really feel like we've got something that um, we can share with people that is going to be useful for their kids. Um, not really having no idea how to distribute it, how to do it, but just kind of doing it and letting it getting out there and that, that surprise coming back of, wow, this is really working. People are responding to this, um, to then the business growing and then the challenges that come with that and everything that could have gone wrong and uh, a lot of things going wrong, um, you know, and then, you know, God bringing it back up again. And so I just, I feel, um, I don't know, I, it just, it, it, we weren't we weren't smart enough to <laughs> to do what it did, you know. Uh, but it just it just humbled that God's been able to use us, use me to to you know to to make Veggie Tales and, and to to work in kids' lives. And so, um, you know, it's I I feel after 21 years uh, of doing the show, um, you know, just really blessed and just hope hope that God can continue to use the show to reach kids' lives. Have you ever felt like giving up during those times, the difficult times? I mean, I remember. Um, you know, in the bankruptcy and, and, and you know, or the early 2000s, uh, just being really, uh, it, I just, it was a really hard place. And, and I, uh, a Twyla Paris, I, I was in the car and a Twyla Paris uh, song came on and it just really spoke, God is in control was the, was the name of it. And it just, at that point, it just really sunk in that, yeah, you know, regardless of, of you know, everything that we think that we can do and, and all of our efforts and, you know, our successes and our failures, over all of that, God is in control, and, and just to rest in that, and so and that's what I'm hoping to continue to do. God knew what was happening and how oh, yeah. He could transition that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just just you know, being along for the ride, and, and just being willing to let God use us. And that's I think that's all. You know, just whether it's for you know your your vocation or, or whatever, I think that's where we need to be as Christians, just as vessels that that God can use, and just being willing to do that. Yeah. More with Larry the Cucumber's alter ego, Mike Naraki, when we return. And as we go to the break from VeggieTales' newest DVD release, Noah's Ark, which stars the voice talents of Wayne Brady and Jackie Velasquez, here's the song, Come in Twos. Like salt goes with pepper and carrots with peas. A sock with its mate. Macaroni and cheese. A cup and a saucer. Or a pair of shoes. The best things in life come in twos. They come in twos. They come in twos. Look, two bunnies. You two. The best things in life come in twos. Adorable. It's cookies with milk and it's ham with eggs. Two birds of a feather, your arms and your legs. It's making these out of me's and you's. The best things in life come in twos. They come in twos. They come in twos. Were those giraffes? Twos. Emus. Twos. Bison. Crocodiles. Penguins. What's going on? Maybe they're putting in a zoo. The animals are all headed in the same direction. Yeah, to the orange grove. To the orange grove! Oh, I hope this isn't one of Dad's little projects. Well, I don't think it's little at all. You gave me 110 billion times 2%. That's all I ever asked for. Yeah, I guess my dream kind of changed. After practicing with Junior, I realized how good it felt to work hard at something and get better at it. That's a dream come true for us all. Welcome back. You know, there's always a good lesson or moral truth taught in VeggieTale stories. Well, today, Greg Bogdan is talking with Larry the Cucumber, or, well, I guess I should say he's actually talking to the voice behind Larry, VeggieTale's co-creator, Mike Naraki. After the company had experienced unprecedented growth in the 90s, for a variety of complex reasons, in 2003, Big Idea Productions, VeggieTales' parent company, declared bankruptcy and was sold to Classic Media. But VeggieTales has survived. In addition to new DVD releases like Noah's Ark, a new revamped series has resulted called VeggieTales in the House, found exclusively on Netflix. So you went from VHS to DVD, and now there's a relationship with Netflix. Yes, How did that with, develop? With streaming. Well, we were our parent company, uh, Classic Media, uh, was acquired, acquired by DreamWorks Animation um, a couple years ago. And um, 
and uh, Netflix approached DreamWorks and said, you know, we'd love, uh, you know, to have a number of your uh, a number of your properties as Netflix series and VeggieTales is one of those properties that we'd love a Netflix series for which was wonderful we had done over the years we had done our catalog content our DVD content we had streamed some of those shows on Netflix and they'd always had really good viewership and so it was a great opportunity to say hey you know now you know Netflix is you know asking for a whole new series uh, you know to, to stream uh, that's exclusive to Netflix so you guys ended up giving it uh, a little bit of a facelift and changed the characters and the animation style. What was the reason for the facelift? We created the show 20 years ago, um, and the, the style of the characters when Phil, you know, modeled Bob and Larry for the first time, they were really limited by the state of the uh, the art at the time uh, 20 years ago. Um, and so, you know, after 20 years, wanted to take a look at the characters to say, hey, how can we how can we model them? How can we uh, rig them? You know, to to be a bit more expressive. And, and cartoony uh, for this new uh, cartoony format of, yeah. of Netflix. So that was behind that. Interesting. Um, so your newest uh, uh, DVD coming out is Noah's Ark. Uh, what's yeah. the core message you're trying to get across on this? It's a, it's a lesson in, in trusting God and that we can trust God because he always keeps his promises. Um, and we've, in, in this episode, uh, we follow uh, Shem, one of Noah's sons, his oldest son. Okay. And uh, so we, we, view, we view the story through, he, through his perspective as he struggles to, to understand the faith of his father and, and, and how it is that you know, he can trust so much in God. And you know, through the course of the st story, uh, Shem comes to share his father's faith. About this monstrosity, Ark. Ark you're building? I get that God told you to build it, but did he say why? Sure he did. Why do you think I'm in such a rush? 600 years old and you still can't slow him down. Shem, look who we brought you. You're finally here. Hey, Mom! Oh, Mom, it's good to be home, even if I barely recognize it. How are you handling all this, Nema? I... I mean, Mom? <laughs> I'll admit, when I heard what God told your father, I was a little rattled. But I trust him, and I trust God. Now, why don't you sit down and eat? Uh -huh. Found it! Relax, everybody. This is only a drill. <laughs> Get it? What is your message to kids today, overall, if you had to say what that is, and why do you feel that's still so important? God made you special, and he loves you very much. Um, I think that's so important for kids to know that they are created and loved by their Heavenly Father, um, and they can take that knowledge into their, into their lives, and, and just, you know, that, that becomes the, the core of, of who they are. And so um, we just really want to continue to reiterate that message to kids. Um, you know, if we're, if we're teaching a lesson in, in, you know, having faith in God, like with Noah or in, 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 in trusting God or, or, or sharing or whatever, all of those are based in the fact that there's a the loving God who made us and who wants a relationship with us, and that's what we want kids to know. Always remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye. You can watch all new adventures of Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber on their new series, VeggieTales in the House, on Netflix. Final thoughts about some of the pitfalls of Christian media right after this. Men and women of faith who want to bring the message of the gospel to the airwaves because they know it's going to reach more people, they have good intentions. But they also need to surround themselves with people who don't believe the hype. Welcome back. You know, the goal of the creators behind VeggieTales was to bring Bible stories to children in an engaging and entertaining way. But VeggieTales was never meant to replace Bible reading itself. The stories Bob and Larry told were meant to supplement Bible study that was taking place at home and at the church. There are some pitfalls to using Christian media, and Dave Niederhood, Director of Ministry Relations at KFAX Radio in the San Francisco Bay Area, talks about them in today's Final Thoughts. Hello friends, it is my privilege to work at AM 1100 KFAX, and as Director of Ministries there, I've had a number of opportunities to meet with pastors of large churches, small churches, uh, to work with people who are really striving to bring the gospel around the Bay Area, and that's incredibly exciting. 
I've also had the opportunity to serve in a small church. I pastored a church in Alameda for many years, and I grew up in a media religious family. Um, well, put that more correctly, I grew up in a home where my dad was the radio minister of our denomination. So I grew up comfortable around the idea that the gospel should be on the airwaves. But today I want to talk for a minute or two about the unintended consequences of Christian media. I think my growing up years were excellent background. I learned a lot about the fact that while preaching on the radio and on television are extremely important and they're great ways to get the gospel communicated, there are some serious pitfalls. And I think a couple of them are unintended sort of consequences. They're things that happen usually without anybody meaning for them to happen. And the first one is the creation of Christian celebrities. Here on Christian television, it happens. On Christian radio, it happens too. And I think most people who want to, men and women of faith, who want to bring the message of the gospel to the airwaves because they know it's going to reach more people, they have good intentions. But they also need to surround themselves with people who don't believe the hype, with people who can call into question their motivations, their decisions. Otherwise, we see media empires get built when there should be a servant's heart. Otherwise, we see things like what happened with Harold Camping. And that was a situation that drove near and dear to the church that I served. It was a church that he had used to been a part of and he split it apart before I arrived there. But I realized the deep wounds that were caused when somebody took the power of the airwaves and abused that authority and led people astray. So I now work at the largest Christian radio station west of the Mississippi. There's a lot of power at that station, a lot of power to lead people one way or another. And one thing I would ask you to do is to pray for us. Pray for those who work here at KTLN. Pray for me and the other staff at KFAX, that we would be wise and discerning about what we put on our airwaves. Not everything that uses the name of Jesus is the gospel, and we want to be discerning about that. The second unintended consequence is uh, the tendency for people to isolate instead of coming together in community. And real briefly, what I mean by that is uh, it's tempting for people to become what's sometimes called bedside Baptists, people who wake up in the morning, flip on the TV, watch a TV preacher and say, there, I did church for the day. I'm sorry, no, you didn't. And people who listen to the radio and will come up to me at events and say, oh, my pastor is and they'll name a famous national pastor from Georgia or from Cleveland. And while we love having those national ministries on our airwaves, I always say that our station is here to supplement your journey in the Christian faith and never to be a replacement for your participation in a local body of believers. So this is a couple of challenges that I would like to throw out to the audience. And as you listen to Christian radio, listen discerningly. As you watch Christian television, Watch discerningly and be sure to get plugged into a local church. This is Dave Naderhood. Thanks for listening. I like what Dave and, uh, for that matter, Mike said about uh, the limits of the use of media. Uh, media is not to, uh, Christian media, uh, our ministry is not to replace the church, it's to be a supplement and it's to be an addendum to what happens in the local body. The kononia is important. When I talk to people, it's generally two people at a time sitting in a living room or someplace in their home watching television. And it, it can be pretty impersonal. It's important to be a member of the body of Christ, to have a local church where you're together with the kononia, the body of Christ, getting together, worshiping together, lifting your hearts and your praise together uh, to the Lord, and uh, in discipleship and, and spiritual development. That is absolutely important. We're not replacing the church. We're here as a part of the church to help to make sure the church grows. Thanks for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Significant Insights.